In this video we're looking at half-life. Um, first of all, with radioactivity, um, if you have a single atom that's got a certain number of protons and neutrons inside of it, uh, inside of the nucleus, you can never um, uh, predict when that one single nucleus will decay into multiple um, uh, parts. So you don't know when it'll happen. It's just impossible to predict. There may be specific forces and, and things going on inside that could be predicted if you could get right down low enough to work it out, but at the end of the day we, we can't predict it. So um, we can't tell you how long it will take um, for this to happen, for a single atom. However, <clears throat> so that's unpredictable decay. Um, however, there is an aspect of this which is predictable where if you have a, uh, a sample um, of material, so this is not a nucleus anymore, this is like a uh, showing all the atoms in the material, and um, statistically we can look at the whole lot of these and we can say that the amount of time it takes for them to decay um, is... Um, and, and no, I'll give you that later. Here's something just to link it in. You might remember that from a video game, but this is actually the symbol for half life. But I'll just I'll come back to that. Um, I was going to write tau as a time constant type thing, but it's different. So I'll just write t. Um, so there is a time which you can uh, predict for the whole sample. Okay, so that has to be for the um, for the whole sample. So individually we can't do anything but um, we notice that if we if we plot a graph this is a good way of looking at it of um, number of, uh, of, of decays over time um, we see that uh, the, there's a um, Ooh, this might not be the best graph to give, but you can you can you can get an accurate prediction of the number of decays over time. It should start high, um, and and then it'll decrease. Um, another way to look at it is the uh, amount that has decayed um, over time. It will increase with the same kind of exponential thing which these two other graphs are saying the same thing that as time increases more atoms have decayed um, the one on the left is um, is is more the okay a better way of of phrasing it would be um, number of decays would be the count rate so you get a Geiger counter um, which measures the radioactive um, uh, presence and um, it would flash every time there there was a decay in one of these, and it turned into a different uh, atom, um, uh, or yeah, turned into a different atom, or split into two separate atoms, or whatever. Um, <coughs> but either way, radiation is given off in that process. Um, yeah. Anyway, so the count rate um, is decreasing over time as more and more of the substance decays. Um, there'll be less and less of the original radioactive material left. So that's why the count rate decreases to practically nothing over time. And this one on the right hand side, putting that in the same term, the amount of atoms that have decayed will uh, will increase. Uh, maybe... Well the count rate's going to be high to start with, so this is probably actually going to go this way, isn't it? And then it's going to reach a peak and no more will decay. Um, so the number of decays or the count rate um, will. What what we find is that there's a time that it takes for um, that count rate, that original count rate, to decrease by half. So half the original, and that time is what we would call the half life. <coughs> so, <coughs> so well that that's pretty much the whole thing. I'll get into that in a little bit more detail shortly, but I'll just go through the. Uh, process again. So any individual atom, uh, any individual atom, which is one of these down here, <coughs> excuse me, um, you can't tell when that one individual atom will decay. Um, however, you can look at the whole sample and there's a predictable decay rate.
and we call that the half-life symbol lambda okay and the half-life it's not a video game um, it is the amount of time let's write this definition it is the amount of time um, it takes for um, the count rate to decrease by half by half that's the radioactive count rate it also uh, works out to be the same amount of time it takes for half <coughs> the material to decay so half the radioactive material to decay and the reason that is is because the amount of decays per second the count rate is proportional to the amount of undecayed material which makes sense <coughs> excuse me I'm about to have a coughing fit so I think that covers it and we'll finish there <coughs> okay I just had my coughing fit um, we won't finish there because um, I just want to give you a useful example of um, half-life um, if you had a sample um, that was putting out uh, no we'll put it this way a sample that had uh, 10,000 radioactive atoms um, and it has a half-life of um, say 15 minutes um, we we want to know um, we want to know how much of that sample will be left after uh, 30 minutes okay so uh, what we would have to do is take the 30 minute time divide it by 15 which is the half life that means two half lives have passed okay so two half lives have passed that means it's divided by two twice so we've gone from uh, our original sample rate 10,000 it's gone to 5,000 and then we've gone once more to 2,500 so there'll be 2,500 atoms of that left <coughs> um, you could also look at the count rate if the count rate was um, I mean you could actually work out the count rate from this approximately anyway um, because it's exponential you'd have to draw a graph and work out the gradient of the graph um, but <coughs> that's a little bit beyond this level <coughs> but for instance if the count rate was um, uh, let's say 20 counts per second to start with down here it would be 10 counts per second and then down here it would be 5 counts per second because it's uh, the count rate drops according to the half-life as well okay and that I think covers it you can you can write a uh, <coughs> an equation um, to represent the half-life um, and the amount decayed um, but again that's beyond this level I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly <coughs> excuse me I had another little coughing um, the formula I was just going to quickly give you um, is that the number of undecayed um, uh, atoms is equal to the original sample um, times by half and you, that half is to the power of the time uh, divided by the half-life <coughs> excuse me so what that's saying is uh, in that process we did below the half-life was 15 minutes um, and the total time available t was uh, 30 minutes so that was half to the power of 2 which is a quarter and so a quarter uh, of our original sample gave us that um, the answer for the amount of undecayed atoms there's various forms of this equation but they all do roughly the same thing and there you have it